but every once in a while you find yourself in the old west you gotta take on the gunslinger like cornholio The way you beat Cornholio, guys, there's a very easy way to beat Cornholio. It's called the circle game, the round and round. So what you got to do is you start making circles around and around and around them as fast as you can. As fast as you can. This is fast as my Crocs will take me. And I'm not even in Crocs sport mode. But you do. Ah, okay. I'm sorry. I was just messing with you, Corny. I was just messing with you. I was just playing. Dude, I was just, I was kidding. Thank you. I'm out. Sheesh, move. Oh. Oh. Thank you, sissy. You're my sweet girl, baby. Hey folks, Lester here. Uh, uh, I was gifted that. Today I am getting a pretty early start. Jamie and I are about to head out on a little holiday getaway to go see her son. Xander's not able to make it down this year. And Jamie does not wanna, you know, you don't want you want to make sure you have your see your kids over the holidays. I don't have Lex the first half of Christmas. You know, he, he's still young, and so he still has to adhere to the court decree when it shares holidays. We split holidays with his mama. Ellie's going to be here along with Jake, who lives right over here. <laughs> that was always something. And then we've also asked Courtney, her partner Ashley, and Tegan to come stay they're gonna house it for us and uh with listen with with the five of those combined there is no way they can't troubleshoot you know ellie knows the ins and outs of the place jake knows everything there is to know and he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty if you know what i mean of course with tegan ashley and um, courtney I feel like we're in really good hands. I, I really do. I know a lot of folks can't ever get away and have total peace of mind, and it will be difficult. It, it will. It's always difficult having to leave for a couple of days because you are, you already know what kind of riffraff these guys can get into. But uh, it is something we're going to do. And so today I'm going to try to do as much as I can to get everything set up that will make their lives as easy as possible. So you guys come join me as I get set up for our couple of days away. And uh, it'll be fun. We'll find something, but we'll, we'll find a way to make this fun. I just want you to look around at all of the activity going on here. There are, guys, there are animals everywhere. There are babies. These are just the littles. These are just the littles. And they're everywhere. Seriously. They're there. And they're all waiting for daddy. They're all waiting for dad to come out and get their day started. And I love it. So the one thing that you must always maintain. Hold on. I'll be right back. So the one thing you must always make sure to maintain on the farm is a routine. The uh, babies get into a little bit of a, well, they like the routine. They, hey, you're getting me, this is why I, see, this is why I cannot very easily stop it. This is why I don't like walking through here because you get in this little small, okay. Let's try this again. Routine. You must maintain a routine. And uh, that sometimes, <laughs> I think one of the most important things to do because just like us as humans, we get our body clocks conditioned to certain things, when to eat, when to, I mean, you name it. Every, <sighs> everything that we do, look at this. Get out of my video. 
everything that we do has to follow a routine. I'm gonna bring the full wheel next time. I will never walk down here and do this, this again. This morning, no one wants to let Danny eat. No one wants to let poor Danny have anything to eat. There is food all over the ground. Yet, when I pour some out, and Dan thinks he might get some, nope, that ain't gonna happen. No one wants to share with Dan. Sorry, Danny. And y'all wonder why we always keep Dan up in the front pasture with the littles. He's safer up there. These girls could be mean to him. Oh, Dan was sneaky. Dan stuck around and found something. There we go. So I always, look at this. Do y'all see this? That is just, there are plenty of piles for everybody, y'all. And remember, this is not a nutritional meal. This is just a snack. I always feed snacks, snacks that you guys send. And that helps get our babies moved to the back pasture. I will close them off in here. And this will force them at some point, they'll finish those snacks and then they have to go to work. Uh, I wanna show you what I talked to Jake about a whole lot. I've also explained this to Ellie and Jamie, something that I was taught a long time ago. The radius of a horse or even a donkey is so wide. When we put down our goat feed, seriously, when we put down our goat feed, we can literally drop a little bit of goat feed, take a big step, drop some more goat feed. Hey, don't judge the snacks, y'all, don't judge. So if I was putting goat feed, I'd have some goat feed there, goat feed there, goat feed there, goat feed there. But you can't do that with your big animals. You have to take at least, I would say 10 yards because there's a big radius around each animal of a danger zone, if you will. There's a danger zone. And so the animals don't feel comfortable if they're if they're too close together, especially when they're when they're picked on like Donkey Dan is here. You have your cows, you know, you have your longhorns. They can swing around with them horns and jab you. You have the horses that'll kick, the donkeys that'll kick and bite, and they can be really mean to each other. And they are. They are purposely mean to some of them. So y'all can see that uh, Santana is trying to move Bucky's away from the food over there. She's thinking that she'll wave her horns around and have Bucky's and uh, Ivy move, move along. But uh, they're not moving. They're, <laughs> they're going to hold their ground. But, oh my gosh. Poor Danny. Now look, Dan's going to sneak up behind the ladies here. I want y'all to notice something here. And we have not talked a lot about this, but I want you to notice something. I'm going to spin around here and show you the gate is wide open. You see the gate is wide open, right? Yet you're probably saying, well, wait a minute, where's Tex? Where's big Tex? Guys, it's a beautiful thing. When I talk about routine, don't think that animals don't know a routine because Tex knows that a part of his routine, here he is right over there. A part of his routine is to wait. He doesn't go into the back pasture. He has to wait. And now he's gonna follow me back up when I'm gonna give him his big nutritional meal. Let me get this gate closed up. We'll say goodbye to our babies for the day. And we'll be seeing them a little bit later. I've been trying to preach that lesson about routines to Jake and Ellie for as long as I can remember. Even Jamie. Uh, you know, throughout my adult life, through the years that I was divorced and trying to date, a lot of women, seriously, I had a real struggle for trying to convince a woman that I had to be home at a certain time for the routines, the routines of life uh, with, when it comes to farm life. Of course, you always account for when you're gonna have your kids. You don't wanna be spending time away from your kids with, you know, with, with some woman. But um, with animals especially, no matter what, I have to be here at a certain time in the morning. No matter what, I have to be here at a certain time in the afternoon. Now look, I didn't call. I did not call him. He just knows this is the routine. And so on the days whenever things happen and we're running late or whatever else, everyone gets upset. There's a, there's a whole general feeling in the air, a weird mood because their routine has been disrupted and animals don't do well with that. One of the jobs that I ask Jake to do when he's here and I make Ellie do it when he's here. And if they're not, I do it because it's a job you just cannot avoid. We have to rake 
and uh, our, our corral every single morning. Once I take the babies off, well, you can see for yourselves what kind of a mess they've left behind throughout the course of the night. Uh, donkeys, cows, horses, you know, poop everywhere. We're lucky that the urine, as much as they urinate, we have a very, very sandy soil here. So the sand absorbs the urine very, very well. But uh, we cannot let this corral area go uh, more than a day without having it raked and everything kind of mulched and fertilized in because it becomes a mess and you do not want your babies having to stand around in this stuff especially this is a place where we like to feed in the afternoons over here buddy so a lot of folks don't understand why we feed tech twice a day the nutritional meals but everyone else only gets one uh, big meal a day guys that's because he's contained to a small pasture where he doesn't have access to all of the stuff they have in the in the woods there is still a lot of green foliage back there that gives the other animals plenty of energy, nutrition. Tex, though, here in the front doesn't get all of that. So we always make sure that we feed him twice a day uh, and always a full meal. So the feed room is a bit of a wreck, <laughs> and it gets this way. I want to show y'all now how I feed Carl the combos of food that Carl needs. During the winter months, a little bit of cracked corn. He also gets a little bit of the flock pellet, about half a scoop of each. He also gets about a half a scoop of rabbit pellets. He needs the alfalfa content. And then last but not least, we give Carl a half a scoop or so of the mealworms. This gives him all of the protein. Now what you have to do is stir this up real good because he needs to make sure that as he's nibbling away at it, he gets a little bit of everything. I'll walk over here and feed him special. Oh, here we go. I was looking for this right here. This is what I hang. This was gifted to us. I hang this on the side of the fence and so Carl can eat without everyone else bothering him. I know what y'all are probably saying. You're like, Lester, why in the world would you ever let anyone know that you're going to be traveling someone's going to go over there guys the last per let me just say this i love le i love jake but the last person you ever want to screw around with is courtney you do know courtney our farrier listen to me she will she doesn't she will kick your effing ass <laughs> i am dead serious courtney would kick your effing ass Oh, that's funny. You might be upset for me saying that, but honestly, I might have just saved somebody. Some cuckoo thinks I'm going to go over there and look at those animals while Lester's gone. I probably just saved you a butt kicking. So you don't want to come over here. You'd be safer coming over here when Lester is here because you come over here when Courtney's watching the house and you probably, <laughs> you better keep your distance. I'm not that's lying. true. And if anybody wants to be upset with us for saying that, well, then be upset. But you should really be upset with the people who might would. Ringo, you almost got me in his attempt to get Brady. He almost stuck me. Now he's, you know what I should have done? This is a horrible thing of what I've, do, what I've done here. What I should have done was fed the littles first. I was just trying to get Ringo. Stop it, Brady. I'm trying to. Make a video. Stop it, Mr. Huck. Oh, stupid. All right, so I put up, I put the food up pretty high where Brady can't get to it, but Carl can. I put the food up high enough to where Brady and Huck can't get to it, but Carl can, and that's awesome. I've also spilt some along the Brady, you little son of a bill. Okay, we'll should do up a little bit higher than that. How high must one go up to keep Brady from the food? <laughs> so this is a lot of uh, hangry babies. Those are eating what I spilt right there accidentally. These guys are getting very upset because there's no corn out for them yet. So one thing that I always do is throw over last night's oatmeal bowls. Uh, we're not going to feed oatmeal in the morning. That's only an afternoon big meal thing. In the morning, we only do snacks. But I will throw over the oatmeal bowl so that later I can come by and power spray these things out. You can see how nasty they can get 
from the oatmeal <laughs> residue. And you don't want to be putting oatmeal on top of old oatmeal. That's nasty, and that can keep your baby sick. All right, we're moving along. We are trudging along, folks. Stay with me. Have y'all just realized that it might be videos like this? This is going to sound horrible. This sounds very morbid. But have you ever thought about it that it might be a video just like this one that would end up being a, not a will, if something was to happen to me or Jamie and someone had to step in and kind of take over until things got sorted out, they would not know where to go. No, they would, most people would have no idea where to even start. So in saying so, a video like this would kind of be your how-to guide. And it's not just some stuff scratched on paper, put the water out, feed the cows. No, this is kind of showing you the what, the how, the when, the where, the why. This is my, like my living will. Because I'm alive, and it, but it's not even a will. It's like a living how-to in case something was to happen. And I believe everybody should have one of these. And I don't think it has to be notarized. I don't think there's anything legal about it. All I'm saying is if something was to happen on this upcoming trip, because, guys, things happen all the time, and you never expect most things to happen, but if something was to happen, anyone that has to step in and help out, this is your how-to guide. This is the way to maintain the farm, and the babies never skip a beat. Oh, but they're going to miss their daddy. All right, so what we have to do next is feed all these tiny little chickens and ducks and all kinds of stuff all over the place. So it doesn't take a whole lot. I'll go ahead and fill up about half a bucket of this small corn. They don't like the big corn. They like the small stuff. So I'll give them a couple of scoops like so. And this is, this is, I imagine that this is every little girl's dream. Probably taking a bucket in her hands like this. Not, not even little girls. Most men and women, when they imagine what it must be like running a farm, this is probably what they imagine. Let me set my camera down and show you. This is going to be right. funny. This over here is almost every man and woman's vision of running a farm. <laughs> there we go. Come on, everybody. Come on, all you little ducks. Come on, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Look here. All kinds of goodness in the grass, huh? Guys, are you kidding me? Is that really what you envision farm life is all about? Wouldn't farm life be easy if that is, if that truly was all that farm life consists of, wouldn't that be easy? Yeah, unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. It's cute. This is the cute part. This is the cute part that you all like to, to look and smile at. But I uh, promise you, it gets a lot more difficult than that right there. I know what you're all saying, Lester. How much longer can you avoid Ringo? He's just staring at you like he's starving. And oh, trust me, he he comes last, y'all. Ringo comes last. What I got to do now is take care of my little piggies, my sweet piggies. I have a. You all know that we have two two kinds of pigs here. We have the sweet ones, and we have the ones that are not so sweet. Here comes one of my sweet ones over there. Come on, love. Oh, look at her run, everybody. <laughs> look at her run. Oh, she loves her daddy so much because she knows that daddy brings food. So what I do, I keep a uh, container of pig, pig food. I hate this. I hate that it says hog grower because, guys, that little girl, she is not a hog. She is not a hog. But I take a couple of scoops of this, and I put it with her corn. Now listen to me, y'all. You're going to be upset about what I'm going to show you. I'm shaking it all up. Hey, baby. She's a pig, and she likes to root. You would not want to put her food in a bowl because she's a pig. And she likes to root off the ground. That, 
That gives her joy. Look at her. And she's scratching her butt as she does it. See, I know what I'm doing here, people. I know what I'm doing. So most people don't get this one. They're like, Lester, why? Why? Why, Lester? Guys, because don't we all just sometimes need to feel special? And don't we just love to make someone else feel special? So I have a little girl that has a thing for sweet tea. I can't help it, y'all. What's going on over here? We keep a water hose dripping. You're saying, wait, you leave a water hose dripping? Yes, we do, and here's why. Remember those little ducks we talked about earlier? Guys, they are too small to get into our pools because they'll end up drowning. Oh, we've seen it happen a lot. Yes, ducks can drown. Ducks can and do drown. So we empty our pools, the ones they can climb over into, but we do leave water dripping. Uh, we think that mom, she, take it, she took them to the pond once and that was a real disaster. So now we just allow her to keep them around the barn until they're older and can kind of fend them, you know, fend for themselves a little bit easier. And so we do keep them a little muddy pool type area here. So yes, the water does have a constant drip and that will eventually be turned off once they can make their way to the pond like big ducks. But for now they can't. She's woken up, she's nibbled on a few little things and she's already laid back to go to sleep. The amount of different foods that we throw into the Littles mix here in their, for their morning feeding is just crazy. Literally, it's a little bit of everything and anything, a whole lot of little animal cracker treats and all the fun stuff, the corn. Oh my gosh, it makes quite the little, uh, I don't know what you'd call this. What I don't want to do is feed them in the pasture where they sleep. I want to make them go up to the front pasture. I insist they go to the front pasture. They sometimes hate it. They hate me for it. Look at the little ducks. Sometimes they hate me for it, but I like them to move around. I don't want them being lazy. If I allowed them to stay here in this pasture all day long, eating on their hay and feeding them right here, then they would never move. They would never leave. So what I have to do is sometimes walk around and get them to go with me. Y'all, give me a second or so here. Got to get through the gate. Close the gate. I'm also seeing Carl. Looks like he might want to be a little to eat with the littles today. Come on, littles. Let's go. Everybody, come on. Y'all take a walk with daddy. Now we got everybody coming. Sheesh. Come on, littles. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I can do it with one bad knee. Look, I can do it with my bad knees. All right. Come on, babies. We're not finished yet. All right, here we go. Come on, littles. Look how fat they are. So what I'm gonna do is kind of walk along and start. You don't have to go right between my legs. Move it, love. <laughs> I'm gonna walk along here and shake this out for them. And you can see everyone's coming. They're all making their way over. Here comes all kinds of good stuff out of this bucket. If you notice, look here. See that? See how smart that was? Do you know why I did what I did? I put worms on the very bottom, knowing that I could pour all theirs out along here. And when I finally get down to the bottom, look here. <laughs> Guys, am I something? Am I something? Seriously. Have you ever thought that, man, that Lester's something. He may say he's for entertainment purposes only, but that guy knows what he's doing. Because guess what? I kind of do. Even though I like to act like I don't. All right. As you can see, as I slowly pan around that uh, our morning routine has started. Everybody seems to be content with what's going on. They got their bellies uh, kick-started and their day has begun. I hope you guys enjoyed that little uh, bit of a...
morning tutorial, kind of a how-to. And uh, like I said, God forbid something ever happens to me. But uh, if it does, just know that now whoever's going to step into these shoes... Once I don't know if you want to do that or not, like not these particular shoes, but at least you have a starting point. <laughs> all right, everybody. You all have a wonderful day. And uh, let's keep your fingers crossed that nothing happens to me, that this is going to just be a fun educational video. Maybe you got you a couple of laughs, but no one ever has to watch it to figure out exactly what to do to keep this place running. No worms. That there was my worm idea. <laughs>